I'm Zach Aldridge, clearly staying here all week, unlike Brandon. But the Buzz Boys, we still march on even when we're flying solo. A jam-packed Friday with Messi's MLS debut, the World Cup, and the United States starting play. But we start off with the Open Championship. Second round action from Royal Liverpool because of the time difference. Some golfers already are done for their round. Some are having great days, like Brian Harmon going low for the course, following up his solid first round. Roy McIlroy doing well, as is Max Homa. They're making sure they hang around into the weekend. We might not be able to say the same exact thing for Dustin Johnson and Justin Thomas. The two of them likely will be headed on the flight back to the U.S. sooner than later. As we take a look at the leaderboard right now, you'll see Brian Harmon pacing his way leaving the field, a five shot lead over Tommy Fleetwood right now. He had an eagle on 18 to finish off his day at 10 under par, shooting six under for the day. Harmon had no bogeys at all for his round, certainly creating a name for himself and making some space out here at the final major of the year. So now for everything going on at Royal Liverpool, we bring in our guy Kyle Porter. He's been up watching all the action this morning and Kyle Brian Harmon. I mean, wow, looking at the way he went out there round two, went out in 31 and then the Eagle on 18. Just how impressive were you with his first round? Well, it was amazing. You know, it, it was not a round uh, without trouble either, Zach. You know, the, there were a couple of spots where there was one spot on the back nine where he had to pitch out of a bunker and then got up and down. Well, I guess up and up because he missed the green and then chipped in for par. So it was really an extraordinary round where, you know, there, there's birdies to be made out there, but he really kept a clean card together by saving par, saving par, saving par. And now he's probably going to have a lead or a share of a lead or, or, or something like that going into the weekend. It's not really a spot he's been in that often. Played very well at the 2017 U.S. Open uh, at Aaron Hills that Brooks Kepka went on to win. He actually finished in the top 10 last year at St. Andrews at the Open Championship, but was never truly in contention to win that golf tournament. So uh, kind of new territory for Brian Harmon, but uh, he's a very good player. I, I, I don't know if he's going to win the golf tournament, but I would be surprised if he sort of ejected over the next couple of days and wasn't there until the very end. So then kind of following up on Harmon, if you're not 100% certain that he'll be able to win the tournament, why do you think that he might not have what it takes? Is it because some other names you think might charge at him or, or what's the reason for the not so sure? Yeah, you, you got a lot of names to, to throw at him, right? He, he's, he's nine strokes up on Brooks Kepka. He's nine up on Scotty Scheffler. He's... Uh, you know, five up on Tommy Fleetwood. He's eight up on Jordan Speed. Th those feel like big numbers right now, but none of those guys have teed off yet, right? One of those guys is going to shoot a 66, 67, and be within three or four. And when you combine those, the caliber of those players with somebody like Harmon, who again is a very good player, but is not necessarily an elite major championship type player from T to green. Uh, I, I, I think there, it's going to be, it's going to be fascinating. He could go on to win. We we've seen that before, right? We saw Wyndham Clark get his first major championship win uh, ever after not really performing all that well at majors uh, just last time a major was played at the U S open. So there's a possibility that it could happen, but it's going to be a fascinating scenario to see somebody like Harmon, who again, good player being chased by, great players and superstars just behind him. Yeah, some of those other bigger names, some of the superstars who are behind them and still had pretty good days for themselves. You can look at Max Homa, Roy McIlroy, both of them looking like they likely will, of course, will be heading on into the weekend. What do you think about their game heading into the weekend after this second round? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, Rory, for the most part today, has not been very good. He's been very loose off the tee. He's making some... Um, you know, it's interesting, he's making some tight swings and that leads to loose shots. And uh, that's what it's looked like so far uh, to me with his round. I'm actually surprised that he's kind of held it together and is still under par and is kind of battling and, and at least within striking distance a little bit of Brian Harmon. But for him to have a chance to win this major championship, he's going to have to kind of turn on that swing that, that we're so accustomed to. And as for Max Homa, he's been, he's been awesome. Uh, this is what everybody wanted from him of like, hey, you're a top 10 guy, you're a top 15 guy. 
at some point you have to sort of play your way into contending at a major championship and that's what it looks like he's doing. He didn't start off that great. First couple of holes were a little bit shaky, but he's really turned it on. He's made some clutch par saving putts and he's hit the ball very well so far, unlike Rory uh, in, in the second round. You talk about uh, hitting the ball well. We probably can look up Dustin, John Dustin Johnson and Justin Thomas and say that they did not hit the ball uh, too well. Probably their week will be a short stay out there at Royal Liverpool. Um, potentially even John Rahm as well. So some big names who are struggling and probably heading home. What do you think about that? Yeah, Dustin Johnson and Justin Thomas are almost certainly going to miss the cut because it's they're very far away from from where the cut line. Rom, it's a little bit up in the air. You know that that cut line could change even if he's uh, outside of it when he finishes. It could change as the day wears on. So, DJ and JT, uh, listen, it's not been good, especially JT. There's been a real theme of struggle. Uh, throughout this year and and that's uh, it's difficult to watch from two guys that are that are both two-time major champions and I think sort of the the um, sidebar to this Zach is that these are two guys that are under consideration for uh, the, the U.S. Ryder Cup team which is going to be picked in about a month and you know JT I think was considered a lock for the last two years basically and now all of a sudden He's kind of not, and DJ is somebody, this is going to be his last big-time result because he plays live golf and and is not going to play in the, the, the PJ Tour playoffs, obviously. So that's not a great thing to leave Captain Zach Johnson with. So that that's going to be interesting. All, all the Ryder Cup stuff will play out over the next uh, you know month or six weeks, but what happened this week is really going to affect, I think, what uh, what happens with the U.S. team as, as it goes to Rome in September. Yeah, certainly a lot of things to kind of keep our eye on and monitor as we head into the weekend. Everyone's still so far chasing Brian Harmon, who went very low today in his second round. Kyle Porter, thank you so much for checking in with us as the second round of the Open Championship marches on at Royal Liverpool for recaps and everything and analysis. Make sure you check out the First Cut podcast because along with Rick Gaiman, KP, the two of them, they took down the first round analysis and they'll have it keep going for the remainder of the weekend, so make sure you like and subscribe for all your podcast listening needs.